All right, welcome back to the shop, everybody. So if you watched that uh, last episode, I went and uh, tried fitting this into the boat <clears throat> and noticed that uh, I had failed to get the correct bevel here. Or not bevel, but just an angle. And so I sort of approximated what looked like uh, the correct one here. This is a neat tool to have if you're working on boats or anything that uh, is departing from 90 degree angles and there aren't very many 90 degree angles on boats so if you start messing around with boats you'll probably uh, have to acquire one of these. This one's pretty cool because it's an antique. I like antique tools. So, <clears throat> I actually think it was a shallower angle than that. I think it probably to here is more accurate depiction of that angle. So it looks like here to there. Something like that. And here's where if you've ever done any work on boats I don't want to bore you with this but uh, for those of you who haven't your, the reference you're always coming back to uh, in these odd shapes is your center line. So I'm going to have to reestablish my center line. There is one visible through there, but I don't know if that got preserved throughout you know, all the uh, fitting I did on this. So I'm going to reestablish my center line and work off that to duplicate this over here. If I make that cut, be confident that I have plenty of room up here for this to drop that amount and still have uh, room to bite in the existing fiberglass. What will happen, however, is that this is a wedge shape, so as it drops down into the wedge, I'm going to lose some on the side here, <coughs> some clearance. Probably I'll just go ahead and take like an eighth on each side because I know what's going to happen. <coughs> and uh, go from there. I might have to take more, but that will at least give me some uh, something a little closer to what I know my final is going to be. Make sure my mark survives when I start cleaning that.
a little something interesting. Uh, I was uh, I went ahead and sanded the uh, edges after I cut. I used the bandsaw for everything. I, I took off that little eighth inch and I cut to this profile. <clears throat> and I was sanding outside this and actually finished it. But um, it just reminded me to talk about this thing. This is really cool. Something I've had since I, I think it was like my seventh birthday. My dad gave this to me with a, a little kit of Craftsman tools. Uh, it came with this a hammer, a um, couple screwdrivers, and a, a little keychain uh, thing with some uh, with spark plug gauge kind of deal. Um, maybe a pair of pliers. I don't remember. Anyway, I've never seen anything like it since, and it's such a cool idea. It's if you look down inside there. So it's just two pieces of wood joined with a couple of dowels fixed on one side, sliding on the other, and then in the middle, if you can see, there's a spring, right? So, and then this is just a standard uh, belt sander belt. So, uh, and they last a long time when you use them by hand. Uh, so, uh, I can't remember when I last changed this. It's probably about time now. But, I mean, they last a long time. So, this is cool. Uh, and I was just thinking, since I, I haven't seen one for sale anywhere, ever. <laughs> uh, this would be a good little gift idea. I might make some of these for Christmas. Just get a pack of belts. It would, Of course, it would be ideal if you, you know, whatever size of belt sander you might happen to have already, you custom make this to fit those belts. That would be perfect. Um, anyway, pretty neat, huh? So this is all good, and next step is to uh, figure out what to, uh, to do about the, the next stage of the transom fitting. All right, so in case you weren't quite following my mumbling from yesterday when I was playing around on the boat, this is the idea. Uh, this particular piece, I had to lop the ears off of just to get it in that access hole. Um, and you know, I did. I fit this very well. Looks like it, uh, it works well. So I can use this as a pattern uh, to cut down this other one. That this one started the shape as this one, and then I refined it. So putting this ear back on following the curve around and the idea now is I could split this one right down the middle cut it out and then I'll be able to take it to the boat and fit it in and make sure I got this last little bit right I think it'll take a little bit of um, I think it'll take a little bit of work, um, <clears throat> and but once I get it right, then uh, when I make my sandwich, I will have over overlapping seams, or the seams will be overlapped by uh, solid wood, and I won't have any. sections that are broken at both on both layers if that makes sense so that's my uh, that's my plan now I'm gonna go ahead and slice this guy cut him out with what I got right now take to the boat refine it because I think uh, probably have to do something a little different here maybe maybe not maybe it'll look great um, Depending on what happens with that, come back and uh, maybe shape it a little, maybe not, but uh, then flip it over and use it as the pattern for this side, <clears throat> and then also the pattern to refine these if need be. Uh, and after that, uh, it should be pretty darn close to time for me to start putting this transom together. And that's kind of exciting. So cool. So just uh, 
for your situational awareness, I have actually enough material to do four total layers here <clears throat> and some creative overlapping so that you never have a joint repeated. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'll end up with a uh, solid inch thick plus whatever fiberglass is already there. That'll be a strong ass transom. And uh, just to fill you in on my ideas down the road, uh, I don't really, I hate having an outboard on a bracket on a sailboat. I had one like that before on a Catalina 22. And uh, it's just a pain to be reaching over and this is gonna be even worse. This is just to get me back in the water. The idea down the road is uh, I would actually cut into my transom either a V going all the way to the top or just a, uh, you know, a, a, an abbreviated one, um, sort of a trapezoid um, that the outboard would be able to clamp right onto and that way I'd access the motor from inside the cockpit, which is ideal. So having an inch thick uh, reinforcement is, uh, is not at all over engineering in that scenario. So I think that's what I'm going to shoot for. Alright, time for another trip to the boat. Fit this and see whether uh, this meets up with the center line the way I want to. Well, guys, to me, it's looking pretty good down there. I don't know what you can see, how well that's coming into focus, but uh, I think uh, I think I got my shape. I am going to <coughs> check, go ahead and draw a center line down here to make sure that uh, that it looks right when this is directly on the center line. So I'm going to get that established and then I think I'll be good. Alright, so next step, let's see how well or poorly this kind of fits. I'm gonna say much better. Sorry, it's the light's kind of bad, but uh, yeah, you can see down there that's looking right. And that little bit I took off on each side seems to have been about just the perfect amount. Uh, so I think we're good. Can you see back in there? That's what I'm saying. Looks pretty good. It's on the center line. Woo! Just dodging raindrops outside <laughs> with my shop. You know, my table saw is there, and there's the garage door. So I have to. Uh, the weather has to cooperate. And it's been raining all day. We'll see what it's like out there now.
Software is just ripping these top pieces here, and then the rest will be bandsaw work, cutting out that. And once those pieces are cut, uh, I'll put a coat of epoxy on everything, and um, I'll be running out of excuses to start installing. All right, so this video is getting really long, so I'm uh, going to end it here, even though I've actually already been out to the boat working on uh, prepping it for installing this stuff. I had to do some grinding. But uh, this just gives you an idea. You know, we've got a, a solid inch there, and they're all different overlap. 
So one layer will be like that. One layer will be like that. Although I'm going to have to, I did find out I'm going to have to uh, cut these some more. Oops. You get the idea. Um, I'm going to have to, you know, cut them to get them in because even with them skinny, they won't quite slide in. <clears throat> I'll play around with that some more. So, you know. You have some seams going that way, and then this one's skinnier this way than this one. You know, has the curved part being the thicker part. So those seams uh, are bridged and then you have the one that's just flipped right down the middle. So, with some uh, creative, you know, applications of uh, wood screws while the epoxy is curing, I think I can get this all sucked down good and tight with filler material in between epoxy and, uh, and make a, a good solid transom. The plan. So I'm going to end this here, and next video will show you some of the really nasty work I had to do inside the boat. Oh my god, it was uh, I didn't think I was claustrophobic <laughs> until I started doing that.